Hey, so this is part two of our lesson on polarization. So this is primarily on applications of polarization and a more complex form of polarization as well. So if you missed part one of the lesson, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the upper right right now. Please click on that and take a look at it. And here we're going to go over part two of it. Let's get to it. All right, and so let's talk about sunglasses and similar things in everyday life that we use to make life better. If you have light from the sun, it's going to be unpolarized. Generally, when light from the sun hits the ground, like horizontal surface, or something reflective off of the ground, like the hood of a car, or a lake, or a body of water, something like that, you have a fair amount of light that's going to be horizontally polarized in reference to this horizontal surface right here. And so when it hits the observer's eye right here, there's a fair amount of that that's going to be horizontally polarized. That's a little hard for our eyes to interpret, actually, if you have light that's heavily polarized in one plane. If we could somehow cut out that horizontal polarization, we would be cutting out something called glare, and we would still have enough light to be able to make sense of the image. And in fact, it would help us a lot with contrast, making the image a lot more clear. And it turns out that we can do this. We can do this if we have something like polarized lenses that are going to be polarized in this Y plane right here or close to the Y plane right here. It's going to cut out a lot of the horizontal polarization of this light right here and that eliminates glare. So it eliminates a lot of that horizontal polarization that's tough for our eyes to deal with. Here's another image for comparison. If you look at the image on the left, it has a fair amount of polarization in the horizontal plane because that light is reflecting off of these mud flats here. It's a little harder to tell what's going on. It looks almost like a river or a stream or something. It's not. These are mud flats. And then the image on the right, you've got polarization in the vertical plane, which allows us to cut out a lot of the glare and makes things a lot more clear as a result. One other thing we can do with this idea and technology is to say, well, what if we alternated, like had a video gaming system that refreshed every 30 seconds or every 60 seconds, and in one flash you would have something horizontally polarized, and in another flash you would have something vertically polarized, right? And if you had alternating polarization in the glasses here, then you would be able to see with your left eye and then your right eye, and if you did that fast enough, like 30 flashes a second alternating with your left and right eye, your brain could build a three-dimensional image of that. And that's actually what your brain does with your two eyes. The reason you have two eyes is to build true depth perception because you have slightly different images coming into each eye and your brain interprets that. And based off of the differences of those images, you get a real sense of depth. All right, and the last concept I want to talk about is called circular polarization. So circularly polarized light. So first though, I want to talk about, all right, Let's imagine our point of view is over here. We've got that point of view from over here looking this way, kind of like the eyeball is here looking to the left. And if that's the case, you would see a moving electric field and magnetic field at right angles to each other, just like you can see over here a moving electric and magnetic field moving at right angles to each other in unison. All right, and so to make this easier, let's again ignore the magnetic field and think of two electric field waves that are now interfering but they're offset by 90 degrees, which means they have been phase shifted one from another by 90 degrees. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have the same electric field in blue that we talked about before, and this is now an electric field. We're gonna ignore the magnetic field for now. This green is a second electric field. Not only that though, we've shifted this whole thing over. It's called a phase shift of 90 degrees. So they are not matching up the way they were now what we're going to have is where we have this at its maximum this green section is going to be at its minimum and where this green part is at its maximum right here right about here you're going to have the blue wave be at its minimum and so if you set something up like this ah here is the eye i was thinking about to help you to visualize let's imagine we've got four different points here and we're looking at it from this eye's perspective this observer's perspective so we've got a b c and d all right, let's think about what this observer would see at A in terms of the vectors, the blue and the green electric field vectors that you would see. Remember, these are two electric fields. They have been phase shifted or offset by 90 degrees. 
All right, so for the A wave, can you guess what you would see? Probably not at this point, but the other, you'll see the pattern. So for this one, at point A, you're going to have basically no amplitude for the green wave, and you're going to have the maximum positive Y amplitude for the blue wave. And so we would have a drawing like this. All right, let's think about what's going on for the B part of this. What would you see in terms of the amplitudes of the blue and the green waves for this B position right here from the perspective of this observer? All right, well, notice our B position is going to have that blue wave have a zero amplitude, and this green wave is going to have a strong amplitude or a maximum amplitude to the left. So it's going to look like this. How about our next step, which would be the C position right here? What do you think we're going to see? Well, at part C, our green amplitude is effectively zero, and our blue wave amplitude is maximized in the downward direction. So our overall vector is going to look like this. How about our vector at D? Check this out. Well, hopefully it can do this one. You can see that the blue vector is minimized, the green vector is maximized to the right. So we're just going to have an overall green vector going to the right. Now I want you to think about what is happening as you go from A, B, C, and D in terms of the overall electric field that we see from the interference of these two electric fields. What is the trend that you notice here? Well, hopefully you notice that the trend is going to be a circular motion, right? As we go from over here, we're going to be moving in a circular path. Let me show you another way of visualizing this. If you imagine the eye from this perspective over here, and think about what's happening here. Over time, this polarization is moving in a circular pattern as the wave passes. So this is another more complex type of polarization called circularly polarized light. And it can move like in this direction. It could also move in the opposite direction as well. And that's essentially what you need to know about polarization. There is an equation that goes with this. I'm not going to go over it right now because this will be too long, but also because typically I think most physics teachers don't have students do calculations with this, although it's a possibility. So I may do a follow-up later on, but hopefully this has been helpful. These are the major concepts for polarization that you're going to need to know for physics and as a foundation for an AP physics class. Please stick around for other lessons in this unit and others, and if you have any comments down below, let me know. Have a great day.